All right, so hopefully you already took a look at these example problems and tried them on your own before watching this video. And now I will show you how you can interpret the effects that you see here. So let's go ahead and start first with what is the independent variable and dependent variable. So an easy way to identify what the independent and dependent variables are is first of all, remember this is factorial ANOVA. So you have two independent variables. And your two independent variables can simply be located by looking for the label for each different set of groups. So our two independent variables, and you'll always have two independent variables when you're doing a factorial ANOVA, would be type of pain and the type of drug. And there's two different levels of each independent variable, so you have four groups. Two times two is four. Okay, so when it comes to what is the dependent variable, well, just like it's always been, the dependent variable is represented by the actual numbers you see, the actual scores that the researcher computes. So what do these scores all represent? Well, they represent mean pain level on a scale from 1 to 10. So we have pain. If you want to be specific, you could say pain level. All right, so are there any main effects? If so, explain them in plain English. So let's do a little bit of erasing here. All right, so remember, when we talk about main effects, we want to focus on our mean of means. So these mean of means down here at the bottom show you the effect of type of pain on pain level. And we can see here that there's quite a big difference between these two values, right? In fact, there's the 5.75 is larger than the 3.5. And the 5.75 represents chronic pain. The 3.5 represents acute pain. So I know that there is a main effect for type of pain. Now, you need to explain that effect in plain English. Beyond just saying there is a main effect, that doesn't really tell me what kind of effect there is. So, we could say that individuals with chronic pain, so individuals with whoop, chronic pain have a higher pain level than individuals with acute pain. Or you could say have more pain than individuals with acute pain. All right. So, we have a main effect for type of pain. Do we have a main effect for type of drug? Eh, not quite, right? Those two values are pretty darn close to one, one another, so I'm not going to say that we have a main effect for the type of drug itself. But then the next question, is there any interaction effects? So, does the effectiveness of the drug depend on the type of pain that's being experienced, acute, short-term, or chronic, long-term? So there's a couple ways that you can try to figure this out. I'll show you all of them, because why not? You see here, if we just look at the morphine condition, low, high. The fentanyl condition, higher and lower, right? So the 5 is greater than the 4.5, but here, two is lower, right? So you kind of see that inverse effect. You can also look at your graph. So you see for the acute condition, the gold bar is higher, but for the chronic condition, the red bar is higher. And in this case, gold represents fentanyl and red represents morphine. So you know you have an interaction effect through that as well. Or you could do the, I'm gonna draw a line connecting my bars, and you see you get a little crossover interaction effect there as well. So we do know that there is an interaction effect. And we need to explain the nature of that interaction effect. So if we look at this, we can see that when you have acute pain, fentanyl is more effective. So among those with acute pain, I'm sorry, actually, less effective, right? Because higher numbers mean more pain. So morphine works better for acute pain, but for chronic pain, 
fentanyl works better. Less pain, right? You can see that in the picture as well. Right here, you've got less pain with morphine when you have acute pain, but when you have chronic pain, you have less pain with fentanyl. So we need to explain that. So let's see. Morphine, let's say it reduces pain, just to get the fact that we're looking at lower numbers. Reduces pain, and let's be specific, acute pain, more than fentanyl. But fentanyl reduces chronic pain more than morphine. That's it. You're done. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. So now we're looking at the impact of income and type of penalty on the mean number of traffic violations for the year following the penalty. So these people um, have traffic violation. They were assigned to either get a 75, pay a $75 fine or go to driver's ed. Some of them had low income. Some of them were middle class. So what's the IV and DV here? Again, you can quickly see what your independent variables are. Now be careful, you don't wanna say $70, $75 fine, driver's ed, low income, middle class, that's talking about all the levels of the independent variables. But the fine and the driver's education are two levels of the penalty, and the income, at low income and middle class are two levels of income. So your IVs here equal the penalty and the income. Income's really like a pseudo-independent variable because you're not manipulating it. You're just basing it on what their income is. Just like in the previous example, the type of pain is kind of a pseudo-independent variable because you can't manipulate the type of pain they're experiencing. Well, maybe you could, but that wouldn't be very ethical. All right, here we go. Dependent variable. What do these scores represent? They represent the mean number of traffic violations. So our dependent variable is traffic violations. If we want to be specific, we could say traffic violations for the year following the penalty. All right, so now we want to look at are there any main effects here? Well, I'm looking at this and I say, okay, well, is there much of a difference in the number of traffic, the mean number of traffic violations for all of those people in the $75 fine condition versus the driver's ed condition? Not really. Um, those numbers are pretty close. Then when I go down here, so is there a big difference in the number of traffic violations for those with low versus middle income? Not really. So I would say there's really no main effects here. But just because you don't have main effects does not mean that you won't have an interaction effect. So let's take a look and see what we find. So for the $75 fine condition, it looks like the low income people have fewer penalties than the middle class people. But for the driver's ed condition, it looks like the low income people have more penalties than the middle class people. So it looks like if income is an issue for you, if you're low income, the $75 fine is a huge deterrent, probably because you don't have the income to pay that fine to begin with, so you don't want to do that again. You've learned your lesson. But for middle class who are more able to afford that $75 fine, it looks like it doesn't really have much of an impact. In fact, they have the highest number of penalties afterwards, right? So the money did not deter them at all. But time is valuable, and that driver's education is most effective for middle class offenders. So we could say also the red bar is taller here, but the red bar is shorter here, right? So low income, less traffic violations for the fine, middle class, less traffic violations for driver's education. So we've already identified there is an interaction effect. such that, and you can write this a variety of ways, but let's start stick with 
there's fewer traffic violations, right? Or in other words, the penalty is more effective. So there are fewer traffic violations for low income traffic offenders. So there are fewer traffic violations for low income offenders when a $75 fine is the penalty. However, there are fewer, woo, there we go, traffic violations for middle class offenders when driver's ed is the penalty. Again, there's tons of ways that you could write this out. You just want to get at the fact that one penalty is more effective for one group and the other penalty is more effective for the other group. So I hope that helps solidify your understanding of Factorial ANOVA. Again, it's a really useful tool. It's used a lot and it allows you to simultaneously examine two independent variables at once. And in this case, we thought, oh, it doesn't matter what kind of fine you or what kind of penalty you have. It doesn't matter what your income is. So at the face of things, there was no main effects. But then when you look at how those two things interact, you actually see some pretty interesting results.